We got a fun show planned out for all of you guys going into the weekend. But first, I want to pose a trivia question for you all. Tell me the missing receiver from this 2017 leaderboard where Demarius Thomas finished first, Emmanuel Sanders finished second. Who finished third? Let me know in the comment section. I can tell you this. It's not the bus second round pick, Cody Latimer. So let me know in the comments who finished third in receiving back in 2017 for the Broncos. Welcome into the Broncos Breakdown by Chat Sports. Matthew Peterson here with a fun show planned out, like I said. We're going to talk about Blake Martinez. The Giants cut him just yesterday, and the Broncos might have an interest in looking into an available inside linebacker. Plus, Russell Wilson and George Payton are foaming at the mouth for this guy, so we're going to be breaking that down in the second half of the show. But first, if you hate the Raiders, like the video. Now, let's talk about Blake Martinez. So the Giants released him on Thursday, and they saved about $4 million. So you put those savings with the player who's coming off an ACL tear in the later stages of his career. It's not a good combination for Martinez, which ultimately led to him being released. Like I mentioned, coming off an ACL tear where he only played in three games last season. Now, the former Green Bay Packer at one point led the NFL in tackles, which is a bit of a misleading stat. Just because you lead the team in tackles doesn't always mean you are the best linebacker in football or the league in yeah, tackles. Sometimes it could mean you got burned in coverage a lot and you were tackling someone from behind. But here's what he did in 2020 for New York. I mean, two forced fumbles and three sacks? Right now on this depth chart, that's kind of tough to pass on, it feels like. If you're able to capture that 2020 Blake Martinez, or even 90% of that Martinez. But I am guessing the Giants let him go because he doesn't have 90% of what he looked like back in 2020. Now, before we look at some more stats and break this down a little further, I want you all to weigh in for me. Should the Broncos sign Blake Martinez? Why for yes and for no. If you've watched the show before, you know I've got a couple pillars right now with this team. And one of them is I'm not very confident in this off-ball linebacker unit here. I am all for bringing in, at least for a workout, just to see if he is ready to go. Or if this ACL tear is more serious than maybe what we're le being led on to believe, and he's not close to football shape. I mean, after all, they brought in Joe Schober after Jonas Griffith got hurt, which I think tells me there is a little bit concern about the depth of this room because it was a concern, they were concerned enough to want to at least bring him in, see how he looked for one preseason game. And after, outside of Josie Jewell, we're all banking on Jonas Griffith to be that guy this year. But he's working his, his way back from an elbow injury. Alex Singleton, if the Broncos were confident in him, why would they bring in Joe Schober, right? Outside of depth, to me, that's not a depth piece. That's a, hey, can you start? No, you can't. We don't need you on this roster. Now, it's a little unfair to look at Josie Jewell's stats from last season because he got injured in week two. But what he did in 2020... Pretty good numbers, right? Just right there with Blake Martinez. Two sacks, four pass breakups. We can rely on Josie Jewell if he comes back healthy and 100% to look like 2020 Jewell. But the other guys, we're kind of hoping and banking on them stepping up to the plate. Blake Martinez has stepped up to the plate before. We have seen that out of him in the NFL. It's just about, can you get back to that 2020 Martinez? All right, next up on the show, we will be breaking down this mystery receiver. You probably might have already seen it, or you can probably get a good educated guess as who it is. But that's what, we have, that's what we have coming up next on the show of who the Broncos, George Payton and Russell Wilson, are hyping up. And yep, you can guess it. It's probably going to be the return guy who we'll look at in a second. But first, I want to give a shout out to all the new subscribers we have here at the channel. So Main Beard Oil, that's an interesting name. But hey, here at Chat Sports, we are all about two-way audience, audience interaction so you guys can get shout-outs on the show. David Lepic, Tracy Todd, 
Yo, mom's a hoe. No, she's not. Very nice lady. I don't. I, I disagree. Jordan Bailey, Divots, Brent Denny from OIT, Vince, Jim Mans, and Desire Best. Shout out to all of you guys for clicking that subscribe button. If you want to get a shout out on a future show, hit that sub button. Now, we have the best sportsbook partner in the game here at Chat Sports. It is BetUS, where they are giving you guys 125% deposit bonus. What does that mean exactly? That's big numbers right there. You put $100 in, they're going to give you an additional $125. Now you got $225 to play with. I'm putting everything, and I mean everything. And I hope my girlfriend's not watching because if she is, She'll be very upset we're going to be eating ramen if this does not work out. But don't worry. It is going to hit. Broncos minus six. There's no way Geno Smith keeps this a one-touchdown game. It's, a, it's the lock of the century. This is capital lock in Lockland, USA. It has to hit. Chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code Broncos125. All right, I'm done teasing you guys here. Montreal, Washington is the guy Russell Wilson and George Payton are super pumped to see. This goes back quite some time, actually. It wasn't just when they discovered they might have a hidden gem out of the fifth round from Samford University in OTAs and rookie minicamp and into preseason. No, no, no. They loved him all the way back in the pre-draft process. Here's what Russell Wilson said. There are so many talented players in the draft every year. I love watching the guys. I love watching the receivers, the tight ends, running backs, and the linemen too. I will never forget going into his office. He says, hey, come on in. I want to show you some clips. I have a bunch of receiver clips and stuff. We watch every single receiver, literally. When I say every, rece every single receiver, we watch every single receiver for about a good hour and a half, two hours. We watched every single guy, and then we came across this guy named Montrell Washington. We looked at each other like he may be the one. Sure enough, obviously, George and his team have done an amazing job finding great talent and how they pick these guys. It's been really special. And Montrell Washington has been one of the preseason studs. Honestly, you can make the argument he's been the best rookie. And he was a fifth-round draft pick. We haven't seen Greg Dulcich, unfortunately, due to a hamstring injury. Nick Benito had a slow start to training camp in preseason. But Montreal Washington, from the Cowboys game all the way to the Vikings game, he's been bringing it every single week of the preseason. And he's more than just a return man. And that's what he specialized in when he was in Samford, where he had one kickoff return for a touchdown, four punt returns for a touchdown, and great averages to go along with it. Which... We can look at the stats here. This has been a sore unit for the Broncos really since Trenton Holiday left. Over the last five seasons, on the left side of your screen, that is the kickoff returns numbers. On the right side, the punt return numbers. No one has returned anything outside of a Deontay Spencer punt return against the Panthers in 2020 in over five years. Montreal Washington did it five times in Samford. Really excited, not only what he can offer in the return game and special teams, but we saw him in the Vikings game take a jet sweep for, to the house on an 11-yard run. It's clear the Broncos want to give this guy the football in space and let him use his speed. So Broncos country, let's welcome the new guy to Mile High. Type his jersey number, 12, down in the comment section below. If you are excited to see just a new wave of energy and an injection of a heartbeat on special teams for the first time in a while with Montreal Washington fielding kicks. Don't worry, I was not going to leave you guys hanging wondering all weekend who that number three receiver was for the Broncos back in 2017. So drum roll please. Brrr. That would be the one and only Benny Fowler, right? Right behind Emmanuel Sanders and Demarius Thomas. Broncos legend, Benny Fowler. How could we forget? 75-yard touchdown against the Chiefs in 2016. And unfortunately, the game did not end well. But hey, the rest is history. Shout out to all of you guys to making it to the end of the video. Really appreciate you all for tuning in, making us a part of your day. We'll get you guys more Broncos content for the rest of Labor Day weekend. But for that, 
signing off. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.